What's up, I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how to set up a Minecraft server for Dimensional Ascension. This is a fantastic mod pack that takes you through 10 different dimensions with hundreds of handwritten quests, such as the Aether, Crystalline Skies, the Undergarden, and more. So let's get into it. But first, this video is sponsored by Apex Hosting. Click the first link in the description down below if you're looking for a Minecraft server host with powerful DDoS protection, automated backups, great support, super low latency, and more. See the newest discount code in the top right. Currently, it's Apex25 for 25% off your first invoice. Click Get Started, choose your Minecraft edition or any other game for that matter, customize your server, order now, and in no time, you'll have a Minecraft server spun up for you and your friends. A huge thank you to Apex Hosting for sponsoring this and many more videos. So, Dimensional Ascension. You can download this with the CurseForge client or from the CurseForge website. So from Minecraft, head to Browse, search for Dimensional Ascension, click at this one and install it. Then to download the server pack, use this button over here. Or if you're on this page linked down below, simply scroll down until you see this section on the right. Look for server packs, select the latest one here, then choose download. Open the 600 megabyte zip and extract all of these files to a folder where you'll be hosting your server. I'll make a new folder on my desktop simply called DA. I'll drag everything out into here. And once it's done, we can delete the zip. There we go. All you need to do is right click run dot bat and choose edit to open it in Notepad. Here, we can customize how much RAM our server has. The more that we give it, the more smooth it'll run, at least to a certain point. Currently, by default, it's set for a minimum of two gigs of RAM and a maximum of four gigs, XMS, minimum, XMX, maximum. To find out how much RAM you should give your server, hit Control Shift and Escape. To open the Task Manager, then head across to the Performance tab, followed by Memory. Here, you'll see at the bottom how much RAM is currently in use, how much is available, and your total RAM. You'll have something more like 16 gigs here. Windows, your browser, and the rest will probably use about seven. The rest of the nine gigs on your system can be used for the server. Just keep in mind, if you're going to be playing Minecraft at the same time, you'll need to keep some RAM left over for that. So on a 16 gig system with seven used, we have nine left. We can give our server four and the game three, for example. Just keep in mind, you'll need a bit of extra RAM left on your system for different programs to run in the background. Once you come up with a good number, simply punch it in here right before the G. So say five gigs and five gigs. Just like that, you can save this file and close it. I've got quite a bit more RAM, so I'll change this to a much bigger number like 12. Good enough. I'll save it and close it. Now we can double click run.bat to start our Minecraft server. But if you see an error like this, could not load main class, we need to download Java. In the description down below, you'll find a link to Java 17, which is required for Minecraft 1.19.2. Simply make sure it says 17 under version JDK x64 Windows, and then just choose MSI over here to download the installer. Simply save the file and open it, then we can click through the installer here. Make sure that associate jar has this icon over here. If it doesn't, click the drop down and choose will be installed. Then next and install. Once it's done, click finish and try to run run.bat once more. And this time it should work just fine. Now, the first time we start up our server, you'll see this. You'll need to agree to the EULA to run the server. Close this, find the newly curated EULA.txt in the same folder, and then change EULA equals false to EULA equals true. Save and close this. Now, the next time we run run.bat, our server should actually start up and we can join it to play on it. Once your server starts up and you get in game, head to multiplayer, followed by add a server and the server address should be 127.0.0.1 or localhost if you're hosting the server on the same computer. Choose done, then join your new server. And just like that, you're in game. So let's start off at the very top. Let's give ourselves creative mode so we can fly around and stuff like that. To give yourself admin, switch to your console over here and use the command op space your username, in my case, techno. Once we've done that, we're now an operator in game and we can use things like slash game mode, creative, and we're able to start flying, spawn items, and things like that. Sweet. At this point though, we're the only people on the server and nobody else is able to join us, even if they're setting it next to us. There's two more things that we need to handle, the firewall and port forwarding. Let's get into it. You can leave your server running, it's fine. Head across to the next link in the description down below, which should be this page. Here you'll see some colorful text, Minecraft server, inbound, outbound, port 25565, TCP, UDP, allow. These four commands allow our Minecraft server through our Windows firewall. Simply click copy over here, then hit start and type in 
PowerShell. Open this as admin. Inside of this window, hit Control V to paste, then hit Enter a few times to make sure it runs. Once all four of those commands have run, your server should now be open to people on the same network as you. In other words, sitting next to you using the same local router. In order for them to join, they'll need to get your local IP. Inside of this same window, a command prompt, terminal, or a new PowerShell window, use the command ipconfig, one word, and hit enter. This command will show you all the different ways you're connected to networks. Look for the way that you're connected to the internet, in my case, Ethernet adapter Ethernet, and underneath, you should find IPv4 address, followed by 192.168 something something. This is my local IP address, 192.168.1.50. In order for the person next to me to connect, they'll simply need to enter this into their Minecraft server list as the server address. Then they should be able to join the server running on my computer. Fantastic. But keep in mind, if you're using an antivirus or a third-party firewall, you'll need to make sure these rules are added there too. So port 25565 can reach the internet and people can reach your computer. Once you've handled your firewall, the only last thing to do to allow people over the internet to connect is port forwarding. While it sounds scary, it's actually super simple. Simply log into your router, head across to advanced, security, port forwarding, game forwarding, application forwarding, or something along those lines, where you'll see the ability to enter ports, choose a protocol, and enter a local IP. It may be worded differently for you, such as in, out, internal, external, or something along those lines. All you need to do is, wherever you're able to enter port numbers, enter the port 25565. This is our Minecraft server. Do the same for the in and out, internal, external. In my case, I'm required to enter a range, so I'll need to type in this number twice for each of these. Then for the protocol, I'll choose TCP and UDP. If you can't do this, just do it once for TCP, then again once for UDP. Finally, for your local IP, sometimes you'll need to type in the whole thing, I just need to enter the last few digits. You can get your computer's local IP address by hitting start, typing in CMD, PowerShell, or terminal, and using the command ipconfig, one word. Again, find the way you're connected to the internet, IPv4 address, and here's mine. All I need to do is enter these last digits, in my case, 50, and we can add it. Just like that, I've successfully port forwarded my Minecraft server. Now, all I need to do is Google what is my IP and send that to my friends while the server's running. They should then be able to add our Minecraft server and actually join it. It's as simple as that. All that's left to do now is explore different dimensions. But that's for you to explore. So hopefully you found this video useful. Thank you for watching and a special thank you to Apex Hosting for sponsoring this guide. Link down below. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.